And today marks the 23rd anniversary of the death of the winner of June 12, 1993 presidential election, Chief MKO Abiola. Abiola, who died in a controversial circumstance on the 7th of July, 1998, while seeking revalidation of his mandate, is celebrated today as the pillar of democracy in Nigeria. In this report, TVC News senior political correspondent Ayodele Zubaku revisits the life and times of the late business mogul. Moshu Kashima Wolawale Abiola can be described as Nigeria's sacrificial lamb, who fought for peace and democracy he never lived to enjoy. Born on the 24th of August 1937, Abiola died on the 7th of July 1998 in military detention. The name MKO Abiola is synonymous with two things in Nigeria, business and philanthropy. At the time of his death, Abiola was conferred with 197 traditional titles. In 1993, he stepped into another terrain in his quest to serve the people better, politics, which eventually claimed his life. Then came the D-Day, June 12, 1993. Professor Humphrey Wosu's National Electoral Commission conducted a presidential election that is still regarded as the most peaceful and transparent in the history of Nigeria. <laughs> The open ballot system, otherwise known as option A4, used for the 1993 presidential election meant that the results were immediately after the election. Abiola is believed to have won 19 out of 30 states of the federation, including some states which were rather inconceivable for a southerner. His last life victory in Kano was a testimony of how he was a bridge builder across the length and breadth of Nigeria. Then the unthinkable happened. It is true that the presidential election... The then president, General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida, was forced to step aside in the tension that enveloped the country after the annulment of the June 12 election. But instead of handing over to Abiola, Babangida handed over to an unelected man from his hometown, Chief Ernest Shoneko. MKO traveled to some world capital to seek support for his mandates. On his return to Nigeria, he made the Equator Declaration and called himself the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This regime will be firm, humane and decisive. We will not condone nor tolerate any act of indiscipline. Any attempt to test our will will be decisively dealt with. Then Nigeria slid into one of its darkest periods in its history. There were mass arrests and assassinations, especially those perceived to be in support of Abiola's mandates. Most alarming of these incidents was the murder of MKO's wife, Kudira Abiola, in June 1996 and several attempts on the life of Yoruba leader, Chief Ibrahim Adesoya. You realize that for four years this man, because he would not betray the people of my country, has been caused to undergo such inhuman treatment and such cruel experience. His wife was killed, my mother was killed and has given an article informing him of, the, of my mother's assassination and all these other things that the military has caused on him. MKO Abiola was pressurized severally by the Abacha regime to renounce his mandate for his freedom. He was also offered to be paid for all his election expenses, but he rejected all, all in a bid to force him to abandon the June 12 struggle, but he never did. Abiola was reported to have collapsed and died during a meeting with the United States delegation led by Ambassador Thomas Pickering after he drank a cup of tea. The death of MKO Abiola on the 7th of July 1998 at the age of 60 was the breaking news in virtually all international news channels across the world. He succeeded in discrediting military rule in Nigeria, a burden too heavy for the military to carry. Hence, the quick return to democracy in 1999. 23 years after laying the foundation for Nigeria's new democracy with his blood, MK Abiola is still referred to by many as Nigeria president that never ruled. On the 6th of June 2018, President Mamadou Buhari posthumously conferred MK Abiola the highest honor of the Grand Commander of the Federal Republic, GCFR, 
and declared June 12 Democracy Day. I tender the nation's apology to the family of the late MPO at the The National Stadium in Abuja was also named after him. Ayodele Uzubaku, TVC News, Lagos.